different reporting, etc. And what we realized last year was that data quality is so bad um, today, you do not really know where the data comes from. And even further, when we look at compensation, that was a very dramatic, drastic um, example here, uh, we found out that millions of offsets, you could buy credits, you could buy, were faked. Yeah? So millions of them. Uh, greenwashing is an example that greenwashing is a, is a really, really big, uh, huge problem here. So, and if you think further, what does it mean for a company? For a company, this means if you want to solve this problem, if you want to get trustful data, you need to attack, you need to address this information asymmetry. And this means you have to increase the level of trustfulness of this uh, data. Yeah, so we need digital, in a sense, from a um, company perspective, you always want to scale measures, you want to scale your activities, so this means you need of course, digital and efficient verification methods here. Yeah. On the right, you see this example of our SSI, self sovereign identity process, a verification process here, um, and this is a bilateral way, and this is why I put it here, for data sharing and verification process where you do not need any central authority. Next one, please. So the good news is, when we look at blockchain, combine that with the self sovereign identities, so you know what kind of company this is. You have a digital identity, you have a digital identity of the asset behind that, maybe a thousand of assets within a company, and then you have things like zero knowledge proofs, and this is interesting because then we can realize really data sovereignty. Uh, so we can stay in control, we put the, the proof close to the asset itself, etc. So we have a couple of ways to do this to enable really a secure and automated data sharing. And the idea is to really get better primary data, so real data that you can look at from end to end and you can prove was this data changed, where does it come from, where did it go, and so on. So the idea is we can get here tremendous um, efficiency gains in the process. And next one, please. And to add value at scale, this means, as I mentioned, with the end-to-end -end idea here is we have to deeply integrate verification um, in corporate information systems. So in ERP systems, not just in one company, but between companies. Then we have to decide on what does it mean for public infrastructure, so registries for identities. In Europe, we started there with the EID, EIDAS process 2.0. It's the largest IT project in the European Union ever. It's a good starting point there, and we can work on that but you have to do this for different different um, areas as well. So for different industries, but also for corporate identities, for think of a car. Today we have the situation that in, a, in the electricity industry, we do not have a registry, we have a registry there today for things like PV uh, installations or wind parks, etc. but not for electric vehicles. So when you put your car from Belgium to Germany, and you want to charge here, nobody knows what an electric vehicle is. Yeah, so just one company does, but not the entire system. And that's a problem. So there we have to, um, we have to see a lot of progress, I, I think, and we will. So we want to integrate that, and I'll come to the end. Next one, please. Ah, this was changed. <laughs> the order, here, sorry. Um, um, I just, no, it's okay. I can go back for just a second. The idea was here to show you, give you an example, and this was missing a couple of minutes ago. But the idea here was to show you the electricity generator, if they, if he or she has a digital ID, 
because there's a registry behind that. And then you sign the amount of energy produced at this location at what time or, or over what time. And then you have the possibility to either store the, the proof um, and combine that with um, fractional uh, NFTs, for instance, there's one possibility if you're interested in that, please contact me. We wrote a couple of papers uh, about that. We have a lot of solutions, but many others as well. So the idea here is then the customer at the end can check on this verification um, really in a bilateral way. That's the idea of decentralized identities and proofs here. And it makes, it's not a question of should we use blockchain or not. The idea is blockchain can help you because then you can really scale the system and you don't have one entire uh, database for in the world. This doesn't make sense at all. Um, but we have to go deeper here. And now please, the next slide. Yeah, and this is uh, where I want to end here. Where do we see companies today? Where is the status quo today? Today we see that often they start for short-term uh, activities, they start with digital proofs, uh, as I showed with this example of green electricity. The next step now is, um, at least in the European Union and all the companies who want to cooperate with companies here is DPP, is Digital Product Passports. This is very, very important for manufacturers uh, or will be over the next year, starting next year. Um, so they want to make use of verifications for different parts in a process. And you have to report that and others have to check on that, etc., etc. The manuf car manufacturing industry in Germany is, I think they, yeah, they, they do a pretty good job right now with data spaces combined. They make use of blockchains behind that, etc. So it's, it's a very interesting uh, process here. But the ultimate goal is really carbon management. So from a reporting perspective, to tell somebody something that happened in the past, to come to a situation where you really now can, in real time, manage CO2, this is a totally different story. And this is the goal. So this means, for instance, you are a steel manufacturer and you know, okay, right now, on a high granularity, I can buy, time-wise, I can buy electricity according to CO2 intensity on the market. And I get different prices for that. It's, in general, it's possible today. Yeah. And you see that, ah, there are different CO2 intensities and according to different criteria, price is one of them, of course. And then you have on the other side, you see, I can really manage these processes. What about the thresholds, my, my KPIs? During a year, during a period, a quarter or whatever, or a day. And then you combine that. So you really manage CO2. You start to do that. And blockchain, again, is important. I talked about that on a, uh, on a general level, but it's really important to understand that over the last 10, 15 years, my, my impression is we try to bring in blockchain for use cases where we already had a lot of, or a couple of good uh, solutions already. Now, in many cases, at least, it was, was that case. And now I see here we have use cases where this is not the case. Blockchain alone is not a solution that is sufficient, but in combinations with other technologies, this is great. And here's a great, great potential. Yeah. Thank you so much.